In today's video, I'm gonna show you the four steps you'll need to take to make Ableton work similarly to MainStage so you can play with the feel of MainStage and the stability of Ableton Live. Brett Pontecorvo here at LiveKeyboardist.com where I help keyboard players just like you with the ins and outs of live performance software, with mastering sound design, and with building a stable live keyboard rig. If you're new here, please consider hitting that like and subscribe button. All right, so when I say make Ableton work similarly to MainStage, specifically what I'm referring to is that feeling of being able to hit a button and just go to the next sound and the next sound and the next sound and the next sound. So let's jump in and see how that's done. So right now I've just got my default uh, template open, so I'm actually gonna delete this guy here. And our first step is to create channel strips because that is how Ableton works. So I'm gonna create some MIDI channel strips by just hitting the shortcut Command Shift T. Um, and I'm gonna start with four of them. And each of these will be for the different categories of sounds. So I'll rename this one to Keys. And if you just hit Tab, it'll move you over quickly. So Keys, Pads, Tab again. Leads, tab again, auxiliary. All right, so now we've got these clearly labeled and inside of here, just like you guessed, will be the sounds of this type. Now, our second step is gonna be create containers for our sounds to live in. Now, in main stage, you'll have lots of different channel strips per patch, but they're sort of hidden. And in Ableton, we don't get that same functionality. So if you open up your browser from the sidebar, we'll need to create our own way to do that. You can choose instruments from categories, um, and then we'll drag an instrument rack right in to our keys, and we'll do the same for pads, and we'll do the same for leads, and we'll do the same for auxiliary. Now, one final step while we're on the channel strip train is we're also gonna want a way to manipulate these sounds. So from our audio effects, category here, we are going to drop in an audio effect rack. And this is where we'll host some things like reverb and filter so that we can easily uh, manipulate our sounds. So I'll do the same here for leads, the same here for pads, and the same here for keys. If you've had an aha moment, I want you to let me know in the comments below uh, what is sticking out to you so far. All right, so our third step is gonna to be to add some sounds to our setup here. So um, you can go ahead and do that from your user library. I really like to use uh, the Pro Piano Effects Collection for my piano sounds, and I've got a link in the description if you want to grab one for yourself. But instead of just dragging them onto the channel strip, what we're gonna do is we are actually gonna drag it right in to our instrument rack here. So keys instrument rack and where it says drop an instrument or sample, that's where we're gonna do it. So I'm gonna grab here my slow burn. Um, and I also really like to use the crushed giant piano. So I've got two different sounds to choose from. This one is made with the giant as you might expect. All right, so we'll drop in some pad sounds here. Classic Juno with verb, soft glow. We'll drop in some leads here. And for auxiliary, I really like to use uh, from our packs, uh, just like some strings. So I'll go in here to orchestral strings, and I'm gonna drop in string ensemble. And this could also be a good place for things that are just a little bit, they don't really fit into any of the other categories. So I'm gonna leave it here. Uh, and let me know if there are any sounds you miss from main stage, you could let me know that in the comments as well. All right, so the second part of our third step here is that we actually need to create a different location for each of these things here. So when we click on the chain button in our instrument rack, you're gonna see uh, these little guys here and we need to have them all live on their own. So I like to leave position zero empty, but I'm gonna drag this over to one. I'm gonna drag this over to two. Now, if you have 10 sounds in here, you'll do the same thing 10 times. So I'll go ahead and do that with my pads and the same on my leads, and the same on my strings. Okay, so what we've done now is created a way to select our sounds, but of course we need a way to automate this as well. And we're gonna do that by using dummy clips. So the way to do this is what I like to call the two-click method, which I have later discovered is actually a three-click method. So our first click is gonna create a dummy clip, and I'm gonna name this Slow Burn, because that's the name of the piano sound that I'm using. Okay, now if I shift tab, it's gonna show me right here my thing. 
my instrument rack and I'm just going to go like this. I'm going to move this guy. It's my second click, shift tab. And then if you're seeing this screen, sometimes happens, you'll need to click here. And then we're just going to click the dotted line. And what that's going to do is anytime this clip is fired, it's going to make sure the slow burn piano is the one coming out. So we can test that here. If I move this over here and I click this fire button, you'll see it jumps immediately. And that will be my slow burn piano. Right, so no sound. If I fire this. Boom, we've got our sound. So now I'll do the same thing here for the crushed piano. And what's cool about this is these dummy clips don't actually contain the sound. So you can move these in any order that you want as it makes sense for you. So we'll move this guy to the second position now, shift tab, click the dotted line. So now when I hit slow burn, I'm at position one. And when I hit crushed piano, I'm at position two. Now you'll notice this flashing here. That is because I have uh, quantization turned on. So easy way to turn that off. If you select these clips, um, you'll notice that we've got an L and we're gonna go for quantization global. Okay, so that means that it's gonna match whatever's up here. So now it's switching automatically. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and create these dummy clips for each channel. So uh, quick review, double click, pad one, so rename, shift tab, move the chain, shift tab, make sure launch is selected. Uh, sorry, make sure envelopes is selected. Click the dotted line, shift tab, you are done. And then we'll do analog rack. I'll do these pretty quick and I'll meet you back here in a second. All right, I've got those all set up here. You'll also want to create a clip that turns everything off. So if you double click to make it and just create uh, a dummy clip that goes to zero, that will turn all of your sounds off. And you'll see I'm doing that pretty quick. And it's always a good idea to rename so you know what you are doing. All right, so we've made it to step four. This is the final step. And this is where we get our controller involved so we can begin to really uh, play. So first things first, we're gonna head over into our preferences, which you can access quickly by hitting command comma. Um, and underneath the record warp launch tab, you're gonna get some different options for how you want your controller to behave. Um, so I am going to choose that I want my controller to fire clips and then select the next one. That's how we'll easily get um, that next uh, sound queued up for us. So we're gonna click select next scene on launch, right? So that way our scene selected and every time we hit one button, that's gonna fire our clip and we'll be able to move through our sounds. All right, so now that that is done, let's get into the mapping. You can hit Command M to map, and I'm using the Novation Launch Control XL for this, but any controller will do. So we got on the right here our up and down buttons. I like to have those mapped just in case. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and map here to my up button and here to my down button. So we can test that now. Okay, I've got that working. And now, I need to map my fire button, which is right here. So we'll see when I hit that. You'll see I've got that ability now just by hitting that one button to move down. So you can go ahead now and create whatever you want. So by holding down option, I wanna choose for my first sound, slow burn, analog pad. And when I fire this, you'll see that I have created So I could then move to my next sound, which could be, if I hold down option, crushed piano, but maybe I don't want this pad, uh, or maybe I do. Maybe I actually, let's switch to pad one for here, and then we'll leave these guys as off for now. Now I'm noticing that this here is a bit loud, so I can fix that. I can come down here to my pad one, and I can just pull the volume down on this chain. So I've got this set up now and everything is working really well. And if you wanna go deeper, 
Check out the link to my course on this and for the next step, which is setting up your audio effects racks. I've got a link on the screen right now that will teach you how to take more control over this. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time at LiveKeyboardist.com.